Hello, viewers, if anybody's here yet. Um, I'm just figuring out how to uh, get my face in the corner here. Just give me one second. Um, audio, video. Okay. So that's like that. figured it out all right so I'm just gonna like dive in um, this here is um, beta ray bill the beta ray bill director's commentary so I'm gonna move this camera over the beta ray bill director's commentary for issue four um, I'm really proud of this issue I think we did a really good job um, I'm really happy with how it came out um, now I have to apologize to Mike Spicer. So we were so crunched for time on issue four that we had to letter it before we colored it, before Mike had time to color the whole thing. So that means for this director's commentary, we're not we're not gonna see uh, Mike's colors. I apologize, Mike. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was no other way to do it. Let's see. Uh, so I have so these are like the final inks basically so my apologies to Mike Mike you're amazing um, I do have the colored versions but they're not in PDF format I didn't have enough time to make a PDF format so but believe it or not I do appreciate Mike's amazing skills so hey everybody weapons X squall comics hello JP Ignacio caddy rough Matthew Ignacio Sarah Christian thanks for being here everyone um, Christian, yeah, we had a great Friday. Uh, thanks so much for the support, everybody. Uh, what a great time that was. Uh, really great with the sale. For those of you that don't know, I I sold uh, a bunch of original art on Friday. I'm really happy about that. Really exciting. Thank you so much for the support. Anybody who tried to buy a page, I'm sorry that there weren't more people that were able to get a page. I know there was a lot of demand. Um, so, all right. So it's giving me this stream's current bit rate is lower than a recommended bit rate. We recommend enough. I have no idea. Somebody come over here and help me figure out how to stream. All right, let's get right into it. So um, obviously, spoilers for issue four. Um, we've got, uh, I believe this is 20 pages. I'm not positive. 20 pages or 22 pages. Um, I was constantly asking Marvel for more pages because um, I just like stretching things out as much as I can. And my poor editor, Will, was constantly going up to the powers that be about how many pages we can fit into an issue in every issue so I can't remember how many we got away with here but I remember I wanted the, there to be some emotional scenes some things we can get away with and uh, I won't lie this page you know I'm proud of it and just because something takes you a long time doesn't mean that it's good and just because something doesn't take you that long doesn't mean that it's bad so um, with this uh, kind of outline here. I'm going to zoom out of this one just a little bit. There we go. You know, again, I do all my thumbnails on the iPad and um, I don't usually print anything out in blue line unless I, there's a pose that I really want to have. Um, so with this one, I just kind of riffed it. And so just to talk about my process for like 30 seconds, I know I've talked about it a million times, but you know, I have an iPad Pro. I will draw the entire issue out and I on my iPad Pro and uh, like I'll do every single page and I'll figure it all out all the visuals for that comic have been figured out in about two to three days I'll get the thumbnails done and then I start page one the next Monday or whatever the next business day is um, and I just have a blank piece of paper and I just start penciling right onto the paper and I ink right over the pencils um, and I think there's some specific instances where maybe I did use blue line or I, I used a light box and we'll get to that in a second. But for pages like this where, you know, it's really raw, really emotional, um, definitely, yeah, definitely just kind of went with it with the pencil. So, 
Um, oh, Edison, sorry about the spoilers. Um, Ignacio, I'm happy to do it. Ed, I'm so excited to show you guys issue five. Hey, James. Um, yeah, Dylan can never hear enough process talk. I'm the same way. Um, hey, Victor. Uh, all right, so let's get into it. Uh, so here we've got page one. This is pretty self-explanatory, and uh, I did these letters myself. They're on the page. Um, and, you know, for page two, I mean, this is a pretty wild pose here for uh, Beta Ray Bill. <laughs> uh, I think my... Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure my face isn't too um, in the way. But, you know... I'm basically getting all of the kind of, you know, balloon placements here, just in the sketches here, just to kind of give myself some room. And oftentimes I will actually change the dimensions so I don't follow this to the T. It is more or less the same. I'm very happy with this panel here. Um, I think that it is just looks really good. <laughs> um, I also remember spending way too long on this panel. This took me like two hours, and it should not have taken me that long. So frustrating. Happy with Beta Ray Bill's face here. Really like that face. <laughs> uh, it's just a kind of insane. But I like pushing. Now, here's something that I am really happy about. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of being able to, like, figure out awkward things that people have to do or characters have to do in a story. For instance... Just the logistical feat of making sure people understand that there's like a hatch that somebody's pushing up on to get out of uh, like a vehicle or like a submarine or a ship. I was so happy with how I got this. It's like it's one of my favorite panels in the whole book. Um, you know, just bam. And just I feel like the camera placement was just really perfect. And, you know, you got the, the foreground here. Um and then personally, like this sp panel, I also I really struggled with. I feel like I just hit, kicked it out of the park here, and I just totally pooped the bed here. That's just a personal thing. I, you know, was trying to figure out also like the logistics of like this alien creature that they come across. So, and of course, then we get the uh, big kind of alien squid monster here, um, and you know, getting pretty detailed here with the inks. And for this one. I took this sketch because this is so big, right? Um, and the bigger the things get, uh, you know, the it's hard. Like when you're, it's kind of like almost like if I were to pencil this, like on this big piece of 11 by 17 piece of paper, I'd have to basically draw standing up to make sure I'm far enough away from everything to make sure it works. So in this instance, I'll do a quick pencil version of this page and, um, Oh, man, maybe I, I don't even remember. Usually if it's a splash page, I'll thumbnail, I'll like pencil it out in uh, the iPad and then print it out on like an 11 by 17 piece of paper and ink over that just to make my life a little easier. I do this with covers as well. Um, so if you've ever seen any of like the original art of my, so a lot of my covers, it's all been uh, sketched out on the iPad Pro first in pencil, you know, digital pencil and then printed out on blue line on the artboard and I ink over that and scan it back in and I can't remember if I did this or not um, so I remember these pages kind of taking me a long time uh, just a lot of like lines uh, it's kind of how sci-fi books that I do work I, I and I like looking at and reading kind of like sleek and like simplified sci-fi but what I like drawing is like really complicated sci-fi so maybe I should learn how to do this more sleek stuff but here it's just all gritty just lines everywhere characters pulling out analog you know things from their belly and um you know here we have we've got kind of the got the thumbnails over here and i was really happy with this silhouette kind of vibe here even though they're not silhouetted here you know that the, the image of these two characters is very strong on the page and this angle drawing beta ray bill from this angle is like insane i still hadn't mastered it by the time i finished with issue five i just finished it a few weeks ago um so this is like one of the only times where i feel like i've really gotten this pose 
of Beta Ray Bill with like that angle of the face. You know, it's just like one of those weird things. Walt Simonson, I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you figured it out, but well, of course, you know, he created the character, so he knows exactly how the, it, this guy works. I did not, still kind of figuring it out, and it's all these like weird logistical things that you notice when you start drawing a new character for the first time that you did not make. You know, it's like, how the heck do I draw this part? You know, anyway. Uh, some interesting choice on my part. I'm always getting on people for tangents. What the heck's going on here, Dan? Oh my god. Terrible. Terrible, Dan. Shame on me. <sighs> Let's go to some, see if anybody has any questions here. Awesome. 20,000 leagues under the bill. That's kind of the vibe here. Uh, thanks, James. Ian asks, how long does it take to sketch the pages? Kind of depends, right? So with this one, there's a lot of noise here. Like a lot of noise. Um, I knew I wanted it all to be busy. So I've got, when I do these layers, in fact, let's see if I can, man, hold on. Let me see if I can find the raw scan of this. This is Beta Ray Bill, page five. Let's see, I'm going to go to my raw scans folder here. Uh, Beta Ray Bill for, here we go. Let me see if I can open this up. Will preview allow me to flip this image? Yes, it will. All right, here we go. I'm going to go to the raw art right now. So, man, I, I feel like I maybe I did a really good job of erasing here. I don't know if you can tell. Mostly it's just that my lines are not super black. Um, but the penciling is pretty light here. Uh, I mostly was just figuring things out. Um, so, you know, these pencils, they literally look like scribbles. You know, they look like almost nothing. Because I know all the work's going to come into ink anyway. Here, um, I had to white out this a bunch. That's why it looks all funny and a little bit bluish there. But I got it, and I was happy that I got it. I, I did this over a bunch, I remember. Um, going down to here, uh, again, I'm happy with this panel. I like that panel a lot. Love this panel. Very happy with that. Cree? You know, just peeking out. Very cool. Keep that there for now. Um, let's move down to the next page. Okay, let's talk about the suplex page because this is my jam. I'm a big wrestling fan, as you all know, so um, I really wanted to throw in some wrestling moves. Um, and here we have it. So we've got the Thor, the famous Thor Beta Ray Bill fight, the first time they meet. Uh, just a complete blast. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. So obviously I took some liberties, you know, in the Walt Simonson version. Thor does not get suplexed into the earth by Beta Ray Bill. I realize this. But I was kind of thinking, you know, that what, if, you know, just what if like maybe the camera pulled away and, you know, uh, maybe Beta Ray Bill suplexes Thor. Who knows, right? It's just having some fun, right? And um, love, I'm really happy with like how this Thor face came out. I'm a big fan of... Um, of like maybe like kind of like weird handsome Thor like kind of like ugly handsome Thor um, I'm trying to think of the artist name I think his name is oh man what's his name hold on hold on I have the comic right here I love this artist he's from Europe wait hold on yes do I have do I have the issue here? I think I do. Yes. The artist that I'm talking about, of course, is the one and only Das Pastoras. I hope that I'm saying that name right. Um, he has this kind of like really European style. Oh, here, let's go to the main camera, sorry. Uh, really interesting kind of approach to like like very watercolory. I'm not sure what this is. It looks maybe like watercolor and some acrylic. Um, I'm trying to find an example though of his like ugly Thor. Here we go. 
There's some ugly Thor. Right there, right? Like, it just looks weird. Like, but in the best way. I mean, I just love this stuff. It's so fun. Um, kind of like gritty, you know, like a gritty German dude. You know, like maybe he's get, been in one too many bar fights. You know, he just looks a little awkward. Like, not in the sense that, like, of bad draftsmanship in any way. It's just like, like a weird take on Thor, which I really like. Um... So that was kind of the vibe I was going for right here. Um, yeah, so Das Pastors, I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, going over here, um, I love transitions. You'll notice I do this a lot. Um, I switched things up a little bit here. Um, I wanted them to be on equal footing here. This panel, the way that I kind of did it out, it kind of looks like, um, you know, Thor is in like a, a position of power like he's gained the upper hand where I kind of wanted it to be a little more equal so I raised him up made them a more equal shape um and then I didn't want I didn't I felt it was kind of weird to have beta ray bill like rushing out of context in the panel right there's no reason for it so I just put this little schwa here and then it just cuts right to the action and wham turns uh Thor around and suplexes him Thor's arms like i Oh my gosh. Let me see. I'm going to find the... I got to show you the original art of this. Because it took me... Oh man, let's see. Raw scans, raw scans. Here we go. So, hold on. Let me flip this around. You look at how... Oh my god. Alright. You look at how messy this is. And let's see you know, because this is messy. <laughs> like, I did, I drew this so many times. I inked over it so many times. I did it over so many times. Beta Ray Bill came out great. And in Thor's arms, freaking hell. Just did not want to get drawn. Um, I still think maybe they're a little short, you know. Um, just drove me crazy. Oh, I finally, like, it was getting late. And I had to just, like, call it a day, you know. And... I find that there's this thing, I'm going to go, I get honest here, like, there's a thing that happens when, you know, you do something you love, where you can get a little obsessive about it, like, this has to be the most amazing thing ever, I have to love this, I have to love how it looks all the time, and then, you know, since I thumbnail these entire issues at once, you know, uh, I get really excited about certain scenes, like, I was so excited to draw this page, I remember when this page came along, I was like exhausted, you know, I like wasn't feeling well that day and it's just like sucks and you're like, I want to be having so much fun right now and I'm not. And then I feel good when I'm like doing, I don't know, some like whatever page, like this first page, you know, I'm like, no, I need the good energy when I'm doing these like tough pages, right? Like here, like it's fun, but it's hard and this is just so frustrating. So it's important to be able to let it go and like appreciate what you can appreciate about it. So like. This grab panel I love. I do love Beta Ray Bill pose here. I feel like I really nailed that. I love Thor's hair here. I, again, the Das Pastoris Thor head. I'm really a big fan of. So you find little things to celebrate even when Thor's arms make you want to just lose your mind. Um, use some screen tone here. This is real screen tone, not digital. Um, I like using the big ones just to imply foreground stuff. It's kind of fun. Um, also fun to just draw doors randomly, uh, just kind of a fun visual and big fan of how Beta Ray Bill came out here. All this like leg stuff, his leg junk, it's like very intense and kind of, I'd drawn differently in every single panel you'll notice. Apologies for that. Also a fan of how Beta Ray Bill came out here. So like, I really actually really like this page a lot. I feel like it really came out well. I feel like the storytelling is like really solid. Whereas like this page is so badass but like there was a struggle you know it was like tough to get I didn't want to get made um, and you can kind of see oh, you can see how I approached it here and it's pretty much the same but again taking it all penciled out you know figuring it out on the board up from the blank piece of paper to the inked piece of paper uh, yeah people are talking about Pastoris in the chat now yep uh, Antonio asks, what inspired me 
to make Scuttlebutt into a humanoid robot. I just, I always kind of thought how much, how fun it would be if like, because Scuttlebutt is not, he shows up in the Simonson run and I think it's great. I think, you know, it, it's really fun. I love the design and it's just kind of a ship and it's just there. And I've always wanted the Scuttlebutt, the ship to be more highlighted and which, what way better to highlight it than to like turn it into an actual like android. Um, so that was kind of where the excitement came from that. And I also just like wanted to draw the ship Scuttlebutt like way more and like have it be a real prominent feature. So it just kind of organically moved into like a humanoid thing as well. Um, let's see, Zachary. Thank you. Thanks, Dan, for doing these. Love them. Can't wait for issue five. It was awesome to see you draw this fight. Thanks so much. I'm so glad that you are enjoying these. Um, Matthew Shield asks, did I use gouache for the white? No, I use pro white. Uh, P-R-O space white. That's the, the brand that I like the most. You'll notice that with, I'll bring this back into the, um, you'll notice here with this, I'm going to zoom in here. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot beneath the pro white. Like, so I put down, I white it out. I wait for it to dry. It doesn't take long unless it's a humid day. Um, I pencil over it. I ink over the pencils, and then once the ink is dry, which takes longer than if it was just on paper, I erase, right? And then once I erase, it does not budge. This ink does not budge at all. Um, and I cannot tell you how many friggin' whiteouts I've used where, like, you wait a day and then you try and white out, you try and erase the pencils after you've gone over it. That just makes me crazy. Like, I've never understood the concept of, like, whiteout for illustrators where you just have to ink over it blind without penciling again. I never do that. I white out, wait for it to dry, pencil, then ink over the pencil just like I would on paper, and erase the pencil. And the Pro White is the only one that I feel trusting-wise that won't, you know, go wiggle-wiggle with these, like, ink lines that I have sweated over. I've sweat over, you know, sweated, whatever. Right, I sweat over these. It doesn't look like much now when you look at it, but sometimes you just get it, and you do not want to lose that. So, uh, that being said, you know, I if you get it watery again, I don't know if it's waterproof. Um, so I haven't experimented with that, but you know, I'm not throwing water on my pages, and I never do watercolor washes on them. But if I was doing watercolor washes over it, I, I'd probably pick a acrylic wash or something that's matte finish that was not going to budge no matter what. So. Uh, but yeah. All right, back to it. Um, oh, one more question from Rude Jack Art. Have you ever found any Procreate brushes that can emulate your physical brushes for touch-ups and such? No. Um, and, you know, the only time that I really do touch-ups is when, um, you know, for, like, the panel borders, you know. Um, I never uh, do stuff. I very rarely... Uh, do any sort of like actual like line art editing on the actual drawing after I'm done you know it's like it's all done with like white out and I, I don't feel good about it if it doesn't look good on the page I don't like going into into a digital thing and manipulating it that way so I have not found uh, brushes that make me feel at home with like producing something that would be of finished quality um, you know there's just tools to get it to a finished point where we can start the uh you know get it ready for print so um remember this page this page took me a long time i'm gonna zoom out a little here so we can really get it all i know my face is a little bit in the way i'm actually gonna just kind of delete my face here for a second um really happy with how this one came out you'll notice there's not a lot of detail over here um, I just kind of had an idea of what it was going to be, and I knew it was going to be a long time working, but I knew this was the right shot. Some three-point perspective here. Um, and, you know, it's just all about the details, you know? Like, sometimes you just got to go for it, and I did go for it here. Did my very best. It's one of my favorite pages in the whole book, um, and, like, the whole series. Um, I just feel like I did a really good job on it, and um, I like this machine over here. You know, I don't really know what this machine does, but it's like pulling at the flesh and it's like totally just like a fancy hook machine. <laughs> it doesn't like make any sense, but like I love the way it came out. Um, and, uh, you know, like just kind of all over the place. So many lines. I got to be kind of messy, you know, using my using my thumb to get a little messy with the brush, which I do not do often. 
Uh, I don't like to I don't like to mush around stuff too much, but I felt like it was good to do here. Um, but also big fan of the um, kind of the whiteout, uh, you know, electrical lines and such. Really happy with how this one came out, and you know, not a lot of detail here because I'm not drawing from these, right? I just print this out, and it's literally like a piece of paper that's like next to me, and then I have the blank piece of paper, and I'm just like going, and I'm just looking at that and going here and I always print it out because I cannot stand looking at a computer screen for reference while I draw it just like distracts me so then we're gonna go back to some easy stuff this page did not take me super long um, but again just because it didn't take me a long time doesn't mean that it's not good at least that's what I tell myself um, I am very happy with Beta Ray Bill's figure here really happy with how this came out sometimes it just flows man um, yeah you know this page is I really I like this page a lot and um, I don't know simple though and I'm trying to see if there's any differences no real difference here stuck stuck to the script pretty much um, going here you know I didn't really know what um, what Corbinite or Cor Corbin the planet Corbin looked like so I just kind of had to riff um, and uh, I'm very very happy with Beta Ray Bill's face here just you know, again, again, one of my favorite panels in the book, uh, in the in this issue. Um, just super happy with it. Here is something that I'm kind of kicking myself about. This pose right here. Bill seems too stoic to me. He seems like too f too static. I kind of wanted to have a little more m movement and like Im implying like emotional because he looks like he's about to like he's standing up straight about to get a medal, and it just doesn't fit right. He's all off his off kilter. He's like trying to get his like bearings right. His emotions all over the place. He should have been more like something, you know. Like body language is huge, especially for pull out shots like this. And I just it kind of bothers me. Something that I'm going to look at years from now when the trade paperback comes out. It just very just it's okay. We got to move on. We got to be healthy. Can't look back. But uh, that's one regret that I have about this pose. It's well drawn, but it does not fit. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's see. Let's see, why is this? Oh, okay. So I my uh, my spreads are in a different document because um, I do them in different, but here's kind of the vibe of the this double page spread. Um, take a look at the chat again. Um, thanks, Pablo, taking off his bandages, Lady Sif. Oh man, thank you so much, Victor. I'm glad you got it. Um, Victor, are you talking about the one where I complained about this last panel? I hope that doesn't. I hope that does not soil the page for you. <laughs> um, just like always, oh, trying to look forward, you know. Uh, Yeah, right on. Yeah, I can see that, Saman. Totally. Um, Artisan was Scuttlebutt possibly inspired by the classic sci-fi movie Metropolis? Totally. I was going for that more old school robot approach, hundred um, percent. I was look. I was trying to make it look like it, it was like an early sci-fi robot. I I was kind of trying to get away from like the modern vibe. Um, yeah. So let's go down to the spread. Sorry, it's like in two separate pieces. Um, this is screen tone down here, um, I, which I don't usually do, but I just thought it worked here and it printed really well. So I'm really happy about that. Sometimes if you don't get the, uh oh, battery exhausted. Well, that's no good. Oh, one sec, everybody. Have to put in a new battery in the camera. Good thing I have a charger here, right by my camera station now. Okay, there we go, we're back. Um, so when you do like screen tones, if you don't get them lined up exactly right when they print, they give you that kind of like patterned effect, which like the quilted kind of thing, which I don't, it has a name, I don't know what it's called, and it's, it does not look great in my opinion. So. Glad that didn't happen here. Uh, this spread took me forever. Um, 
she just took me freaking forever just like working on it and working on it and all these little details and you know it just never ends and uh, this is a shout out to the one and only cam kennedy i uh, of, of um dark empire dark empire one and two uh the way that he would draw explosions kind of like falling apart um i just love that i love it and i i it was like one of the first star wars comics i ever read and at first i was like he's drawing x-wings wrong but then like going back on it, i just found all these other things to love and i just thought it was so great and i loved that nate what are they called nave squadron k-n-a-v-e just a, the best so cool thank you cam um Victor, thank you. Love the quiet, more emotional book, moments in the book. I'm so glad. Um, Antonio, the Searcher Sword Massacre panel made me feel both self-conscious of my art, but also inspired me to be more detailed. I'm so glad. You know, I mean, I don't, you don't know, you don't, I hope I'm kind of showing you, you guys, you, you peoples that, um, you know, and within the context of a story, you know, like page one, not very detailed, right? This spread, crazy detailed. So it's important to have a balance, you know, an ebb and flow, because if you make every page like this page, like this spread, I mean, I don't see anybody having a long career in the industry or making a lot of money because you're just not making that much work. Um, you know, you have these, it's like a sprint and then a long, it's all a marathon, right? And you have these moments where you're like really hustling and there's these moments where you just kind of got to pull it back and take it easy. But here's, this is a, this is a hustle moment. And uh, yeah, and uh this is actually, I made this for Mike. I don't believe this is, yeah, this is digital. This is not screen toned or anything. I don't think. I can't remember. Victor, you'll, you'll, you'll find out soon. I think, I don't, I think this, I colored this in digitally for Mike because I really wanted these silhouettes to be strong against all of this detail. Um, so let's see, let's, uh, oh, sorry. Let's go over here. All right, so here we've got kind of the pullout. We're going a little more epic with it and just kind of like getting a little more, kind of getting emotional and like, I'm not sure what the word is. Um, again, getting to draw Scuttlebutt here, really fun. Really, look, any time that I draw Beta Ray Bill's face well is the time for celebration because it's not easy. It is weird, you know? I like that weird, but uh, yeah, rough. <laughs> um, just a few callbacks to the rest of the visuals that happened in the issue. Uh, I, I do really like this page. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I love the widescreen kind of thing. It's kind of what I like to do. Um, all right, let's go over to this page. All right, so here's another page that took me a long time, right? A little more looser. I mean, there's detail, but it's not crazy, you know? I don't think it's... Well, maybe it is a little crazy. I don't know. Moving to this page. This detail is just dumb. What am I doing, right? Um... Remember, the, uh, all these dots were done with, most of the dots were done with a brush, like a traditional brush that the uh, handle, like the, the, the ferrule had fell, fallen off. So it's just the wooden part without the actual brush on it. Just dip that into some ink and just tap it. Makes perfect circles. Um, yeah, three-point perspective here. Uh, I love doing these speed lines. Uh, Beta Ray Bill's pose here, just perfect. Just nailed it. Again, with an empty panel, do that all the time. Um, I definitely was influenced by uh, Gabriel Ba, who, uh, especially in um, the Umbrella Academy, he'd have these like tiny little panels right before a big spread. Uh, and it just made the spread feel that much bigger when you're forced to look at something that's like super tiny on the bottom right of a page, right? You do that page turn and it's huge. The contrast is just amazing. So that's kind of where I got that from um, I drew these legs over so many times there's let's take a look let's take a look at the pencil version here let me see if I can find it I don't know if it's gonna show up Here's the raw scan. Um, 
you can see how dirty like I used a ton of like white out and stuff to get this pose right um, and a lot of times what I'll do is I have that little signal uni ball uh, gel pen I'll grab it so you can see what I was talking about this guy um, I do like little tiny edits just to make things look the right way without having to like pull out the actual white out um, here, there's some white out I used there. Man, it doesn't really show up. That's too bad. But I just trashed this bottom part of the paper. Oh, well. All right. But I'm happy with, again, happy with this panel, too. I just really had a good time with it. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm not, sh I'm not, I didn't actually show you because my screen was blocked. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Here we go. Um, right there. It's kind of that vibe. A lot of pencil marks and stuff, which I clean up. <laughs> it's nice. It's fun looking at it, you know. This pay this this face driving me crazy. Couldn't get it right. White out after white out after white out. Oi. Moving on. Um going to this crazy violent page. So happy with this arm shoulder thing. Not an, an anatomically correct. Don't care. Looks awesome. Um Super happy with this pullout. I love this page. This whole page I love. I love this kind of look. I knew I'd hit something good here. Pulled out there. Let's take a look at the comments. Bill's arms like, damn. Yes, Chris. Right on, Chris. Um, Mech Labs. Yes, totally. I can totally see that. Um... Louis asks, what were your inspirations for the specific story? What themes are you exploring with Bill and his arc? You know, a bunch of stuff. Self-acceptance, you know, figuring out who you are in a place that's unfamiliar. Um, you know, self-love. I don't like to talk too much about the overall themes, you know, because I want people to be able to pull away their own kind of vibe from it. But learning, like, who you are and, like, where you belong and how to accept that and how to push against it in a healthy way. That's some of the stuff that I was trying to explore with Beta Ray Bill, and I'm not sure if I was successful. So, um, going over here, <laughs> so, uh, you know, this issue is all about Scuttlebutt and Bill, and so that's why Scourge and Pip just weren't there because, you know, every once in a while in the story, you just gotta, you gotta pull out, you gotta, you know, give, give the main characters some room, and so this, this was, that excuse uh, not just to pull them out of the story at all but you know it's just like when you do this kind of epic stuff the more characters you throw in the more muddled it can get um so here's them kind of awaking from that fever state like bill wasn't in issue one um i've drawn this side of the ship so many times you know you'd think i'd know how to do it by now but i still have my little reference from the first time i drew it in issue one um and i still have it printed out next to me at the table um same thing here uh drawing crashes i've always felt like i struggled with you know making like the moment of impact really sell and that kind of usually means a quiet moment beforehand um and i don't i love this this um the way this panel looks and i don't like it the way it looks over here i'm not sure what happened um but the rest of the page is pretty cool Again, and drawing Bill straight on, it's so, it's so hard. <laughs> um, yeah, Bruce, it doesn't have to be anatomically correct. Bill is an alien. Indeed he is, and that's how I got away with drawing faces like this, because it's like, I want that like intense light source, you know, but it's like, at what cost? <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to this big spread. Definitely getting real artsy-fartsy with the clouds up here. These took me a while. Um, 
you know, probably maybe the last time I ever draw gothic buildings in a sci-fi story, because, my lord, uh, it took forever. I'm really happy with the way it looks, but it took me a long time. Um, and, again, so with this one, I penciled this in the on the iPad, and then I printed it out um, and inked over it. So I don't think there's any pencil marks on the raw scans. Um, I like kind of doing this hinted detail here at the sword. Like, you know, we know the sword is in the rock, but like you don't actually see it. Um, so I remember like in the colors, Mike had like a really strong cut here of like the sword and then the, the rock. And you'll notice in the printed version, I had him so it's almost more like a gradient. So the rock is kind of the same color as the sword. So you can almost not tell, right? But it's just implied. Um, and I feel like, yeah. Beta Ray and Bloodborne. Yep. Yes. Yeah, kind of how, how I was feeling it. Uh, Warhammer 40k vibe. Yes, Chris. Definitely. Um, hello, Absurd. All right. Let's see here. Moving on. Oh. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Uh, moving on. Coming to this sort of the end of the of the book uh, or the, the issue um, really happy again I don't know I like this issue a lot um, yeah I really did my very best on it so maybe I'm just still kind of like in that like that, that newlywed phase with it you know but um, when I was doing this page you know I'm looking at it here and I'm looking at it here and you can kind of feel it out as you're making it and like this was not big enough so I made it like way bigger here and um, this was really hard to nail these two panels here because you it's so weird you know when they're right next to each other you want the faces to look exactly the same and they're never gonna quite look exactly the same so you just kinda have to be okay with the fact that they're not gonna be and I I'm not like crapping on any other artists that do this it just drives me crazy when I see like the same panel copied and pasted uh, I know it's a time saver and I know sometimes it's done for a comedic effect I just like I just don't like I don't think it reads very well. It just looks weird, in my opinion. Um, so I don't like doing that. So anytime I can draw the same thing over and over again, you know, if I can get away from doing that period, I will. Uh, but here it just like it it worked out, and I just did did two drawings. So uh, again, I know that's like kind of a thing. Not trying to trash on anybody. I just uh, it's just like one of my like pet peeves in American comics that I see, and I just don't want to do it. Sorry, uh, I feel like bad for saying that, but it's just how I feel. It shouldn't be. I shouldn't be ashamed of it. It's not like the artists that do that are bad. I just like. Uh, I just don't like doing it myself. So, um, changed. I changed something about this panel here. It, like wasn't wasn't dynamic enough, or like he wasn't like getting blown back enough, and so I did these little kind of away marks to kind of highlight that. Um, love drawing fire. When I can get into the zone, you know, it takes me a little while to get into it, but once it's there, it's there. I like to be messy with just a little bit of detail, you know. Um, love this panel. When I like drew that on my iPad, I was so happy. I was like, oh, this is gonna be so much fun to draw. And it was. Drawing this big old foot with like the toes curled and stuff, the best. Like like awful toenails. I like how like it almost looks like there's a galaxy in his fire. I thought that was really cool. Um, and here, I still, when I drew this over here, this final page, um, I had no idea what Sertor was going to look like. Like, I hadn't really designed him. Like, I had hinted at his design, you know, the whole time, but, like, I just didn't have any time to, like, actually come up with his official design in my book. So, uh, it wasn't until here that I, like, finally, I, like, basically drew it on the page. <laughs> Um, and I did this on the iPad first, printed it out, and I just basically like figured it out on the iPad the the, the day of, um, and like really getting like wild with those, you know, veins like magma veins, just so much fun to draw. This page, I had such a blast drawing this page, and like these, I you know these did not take me very long because I've already done all the work. I did it here, I did it here. You know, I did it here. By the time you get to this one, it's like everybody knows I can draw these fine. 
they're getting brushed in. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Um, little time saver there. And, uh, man, a fun issue. Had a great time. Mike, of course, killed it. Joe Sabino killed it with the letters as well. Um, you'll notice that I, here I changed the uh, size. I'm going to pull out here a little. I changed the size of the two characters. Um, and uh, of, of like Beta Ray Bill. And then I put, I put uh, Scuttlebutt in a more prominent position because, you know, he just was not looking uh, intense enough. Like the, the, the sizes were too similar. And there's actually, so he's huge um, in this issue. And I actually have a really fun way that they're going to kind of fight the same size next issue, you'll see. Um, uh, which is coming out very soon in like a week and a half or something. But, um, man, I just, I love how this one came out. Oh, so pumped. It's just a blast. And Mike, of course, killed it with the colors. And I don't have my comps yet, otherwise I'd show you issue four comps. But, um, yeah, and that's issue four. Yeah, Surter, what a hottie. That, like, eight pack. Just awesome. Also, like, here he's just kind of in fire. And I kind of wanted a more, like, like intense, like, you know, walking towards vibe. And I just felt like I really got it. Hope this director's these director's commentaries don't just sound like total victory laps, but honestly, like I worked so friggin' hard at this, I just kinda like I'm proud of it. And I just want to talk about it and be positive. So I'm I'm just really in really into this page and I'm happy. This makes me very happy. <laughs> uh Mike usually has a few weeks at least to color, uh, Rude. Um Yeah, James, totally. Great tease for what's coming. Thank you, Absurd. Um, thanks, Antonio. Thanks, Mr. Ruff. Thanks, Brad. Right? Yeah, here we go. Um, you know, I don't know what will happen in the future with my kind of, you know, with my perspective on these pages, you know. I don't know if I'm going to love them or hate them, but, uh, I'm going to remember how I loved them when I first finished, um, I remember this was sitting in my drawer for a while before I sent it to Felix, and I did not want to let it go because I was so happy with it. Um, yeah, but oh well. And issue five comes out uh, very soon. The in not this Wednesday, but the next. Um, actually, I feel like I should take this time before we say goodbye. To look up a few things so i just want to make sure i get beta ray bill beta ray, i'm gonna i'm look, i'm googling this right now beta ray bill issue five i should know this i should know the exact date and i don't beta ray bill issue five comes out july 28th 2021 and actually so okay so let's look at the calendar here So, okay, I'm sorry. So I was wrong. Not next Wednesday, but the 28th. But some fun news on the 21st. Um, hold on. Superman Red and Blue Issue 5. I think that's the one I'm in. I think. Yes, Issue 5 comes out. Sorry, just trying to figure this out. DC Comics. Maybe DC Comics will have it. Um, sorry, guys. I know this is uh, the content you're all here for. Me just Googling when my own comic books come out. Um, well, pretty sure Superman Red and Blue comes out on um, not this Wednesday, but the next one. So the 21st. Or the 20th, I guess, if it's DC, right? Because it comes out on Tuesday. And then uh, Skybound X issue 3. Let's see when this comes out. This is with the Murder Falcon story, July 21st as well. So on July 21st, I'll have a Superman Red and Blue short story that will be coming out. And the Skybound Murder Falcon short story. They're both eight pages. They'll both be out on the 21st 
of this month, which is super exciting, and I'm th I'm really proud of both of them. So uh, check those out, and um, I'm just gonna check back in here. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Mech Labs. Read an article today about you making Murder Falcon Marvel canon by putting them in beta rail. <laughs> Oh, Kenny Porter in a chat. What's up, Kenny? Thanks, bro. Love you, too. Um, yeah, of course. Thank you, Absurd. Thanks. Um, thanks for everybody who... Uh, so, okay, so Luis asks, how did you... I'll, we'll end with this one. How did you end up making a Beta Ray Bill book? What's the story? Because for some of us, it would be a dream come true. Sure it is for you. How did it come, come to happen? Well, honestly, I... <laughs> I sent the uh, the Thor editor an email saying I want to do a Beta Ray Bill book. <laughs> this is a long time ago. This is before I even did Wonder Woman. I think I was wrapping up. I was like maybe in the mur middle of drawing Murder Falcon. And um, I just sent him an email and I said, hey, I'd love to do a Beta Ray Bill book. And he was awesome. You know, he, he emailed me back and he was like, I really like your work a lot. And, and he, you know, he was honest. He's like, I don't know if DC, I don't know if Marvel's going to want to do a Beta Ray Bill book because I don't think that we don't think that beta ray bill will sell very well i said that's totally fair and we kind of like left it at that and he had some ideas for me about maybe writing and drawing some different stuff and i said uh you know i'm open and we we talked about a few different ideas and they just didn't really come to fruition um but beta ray bill was still around and um then it was like c2e2 2019 i think i the editor-in-chief of marvel stopped by we got to chatting and we talked a little bit about Beta Ray Bill. He was like, you know, we'd love you to be part of Marvel. What do you want to do? And I said, <laughs> Beta Ray Bill. And I think he was a little surprised because maybe he thought I was going to say like oh, Wolverine or Spider-Man, which would be really fun. Uh, but I was like, Dude, Beta Ray Bill, 100%. And I had to decide basically then between Beta Ray Bill at Marvel and Wonder Woman at uh, DC. And so I chose uh, Wonder Woman. Um, and... Then we kind of came back around after Wonder Woman was coming to an end. The pandemic was ramping up. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. This is uh, like March, April of last year. And I reached out to Marvel and just kind of saw if they were still interested. And by the time things got settled down in the comic industry in June of 2020, they were like, yeah, let's do it. Let's make this happen. And I started writing it in August. Um, so, you know, it's cool. You know, so many cool projects have happened by me just like asking like hey was this gonna be a, would this be an interest and then you know going back and forth maybe something works out maybe something doesn't work out but you know you never know and i'm really thankful to marvel for letting me do the do this story and you know i don't know it just feels really special and um i had such a good time making it and the editorial process was great like went really well all in all no complaints had a blast um you know got to draw got to draw beta red bill for like a little over a year. What a blessing. And with that, I'm going to say goodnight. Uh, thank you to everybody. Thanks to Mike Spicer. Thanks to Joe Spino. Thanks to Will Moss um, for all the help on this book uh, for is on issue four. And I'll be back to do issue five. My apologies for missing issue three. My life was crazy with moving and deadlines. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll recap it when the trade paperback comes out. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, we'll see you next time, and I'll see you on Friday for Friday with D-Dubs. The giveaway is still going to happen with on Friday with D-Dubs. If you have not already, please go to my previous Friday with D-Dubs, the latest one that you that is on the page, and uh, leave a comment and like so you can be entered into the giveaway for some original art that I did on that, uh, on that video, on that date, um, which you can see by watching it. So thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great rest of your have a great rest of your week and we'll see you on Friday.